uh, I think the biggest contributor to infill uh, isn't going to be single lot subdivisions over time, though those are important. Uh, it's going to be the larger redevelopment sites coming into play at, at significantly higher density, uh, whether it's your Century Parks or your Strathern's or your Blatchford's. That's where you'll get much higher unit count. Um, and then over time, um, more of the medium density, um, you know, row house or brownstone construction in the neighborhoods that have that RF3 zoning. And we've been making refinements to that zoning to try to make it work better. Um, and then the, the so there's a whole strategy that say, sets out conditions for infill to be more feasible and attractive over time. And uh, uh, reorganizing our transit system along a nodes and corridors approach and then putting density along those corridors um, uh, so that uh, places like uh, White Avenue or even 34th Avenue in the fullness of time that you might actually see those uh, have more people living nearby and more business activity and that that's where you'll start to generate that larger more urban feel um, uh, to those streets and, and those neighborhoods and and while still leaving a generally lower density core in the neighborhoods though you might still get you know duplexes and single lot subdivisions and skinny homes but still you know more or less a low-rise uh, family dwellings um, and so it's when you actually get into the nodes and corridors strategy, which we're starting to develop, that you get the larger unit counts plus the big transit-oriented um, so-called grayfield sites and, and uh, malls. Repurposing of malls is, is huge for that. And I've had, I've had those meetings with the folks at um, Millwoods Town Center looking at you know several thousand people there and actually even more retail than they have, but in a much more urban town center footprint, which is actually what we designed Millwoods to do 45 years ago, we just never got the train there. So now that the train's coming, which was under budget. $500 billion. Would you like to tell us again it's $500 million? <laughs> I'm just going to do this. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to do this. Um, but, uh, but I mean, the, the, return, the, return on investment is, the return on investment is enabling many thousands of units of development there, potentially Bonnie Dune in addition to Strathern, potentially a number of sites that, that uh, the train will connect to over time, uh, like Griesbaugh, like some of the sites um, at Meadowlark as you move west and so on and so forth. Though that's, that's payday for, uh, for achieving a higher uh, proportion of, of uh, unit growth through infill.